Today we're going to step through more Tennessee Walls quilts. Well, quilts should be beautiful, but they can be fun too by using some picture fabric to tell a story. Sue Bouchard made this charming quilt while vacationing in her summer home at Ashley Lake, Montana. The stars are bright with red points, beige four patches, and connecting green triangles on the snowballs. Well, she was inspired by local wildlife to cut her star centers out of caribou fabric. But if you look closely, there are bears in there too. She named this quilt Ode to Bear in respect for the bear that hung out on her front porch all week. You know, Sue could not leave the house at all. It's a good thing she had the fabric on hand. Well, the quilting is beautiful as well. There are small trailing leaves quilted in the four patches. A circular feather fills the snowball block and the tendrils are sent out into the star points. Well, the two designs are repeated in the borders. Well, the fabric is great. It's just very woodsy. Oh, to good old Mr. Bear. It's better safe than sorry, however. Well, my sister Patty made this sharp Tennessee waltz. She started with the multicolored border fabric and then pulled the different colors of stars from it. There's that rich purple and deep turquoise stars with light turquoise four patches and purple corners on the snowball blocks. Well, this is a great open free motion stencil in the snowball block. If you just take your finger and trace the line, see if you can go continuously without stopping, then you'll know it's a great easy stencil to quilt. Well, you can clearly see the quilting on the back. With the star stitched in the ditch in the dark thread and the free motion quilting in the lighter thread. It's wonderful. Well, I hung this quilt during the holidays. It looks very festive with dark red star points and a lighter red center. The four patches are a soft green print with dark green in the corners of the snowball block. You know, you can almost hang it from the backside. It's really cool with the quilting around the red stars and then the S quilting on the four patches. The feathers show up well in the thread. It's great. Well, I can see why this block is also known as Railroad Quilt. You can see the tracks going from one star to the next. Well, it's almost time for us to go to the sewing room and finish our quilt. Join me. My star blocks are finished and my star points are very perky. Take a look. You can see how it's very sharp coming right in there to that middle square. The four star points and then the four, four patches sewn in a circle. Well, once I finished sewing them together, I pressed those final seams away from the center so the block lays great. Now, I need to measure it and find out what size my block finished at. The ideal size is nine and a half inches. Measure yours. Use your nine and a half inch square up ruler. Nine and a half inch is perfect, but if it's only nine and a fourth with your sewing, that's fine. Because once you finish your star block, we're going on to the snowball block. And that is cut the same size. You want to cut your uh, background squares into nine and a half inch squares or whatever measurement. Well, this is what the snowball block looks like. And I don't know why it's called a snowball block. It just is. Maybe because these little squares we sew on the diagonal end up making a circle. I'd like to know how this ball is going to roll. But we've got all of our uh, background squares cut. The corners are three and a half inches square. I'm using this light purple. It's the same light purple that I used in the triangle. And I have to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side. Well, this tool is the best tool for drawing diagonal lines. You know how you place your squares wrong side up and then you have to take a marker and draw your line and everything just shifts around for you. Well, this is sandpaper and so when you put your square on, drop your ruler with a diagonal line along the left edge, 
nothing shifts. It is a miracle. That's all I can say. And it's stuck on there so good that you need to take your stiletto to peel them off. Now, mark a couple at one time. Goes a lot faster. Now, we've got our three and a half inch squares marked with a diagonal line on the wrong side. We've got our nine and a half inch background squares right side up. So I placed my multi-purpose foot on my sewing machine so that I could just jump from one to the next. Just place your uh, square right sides together on your corner, line up your needle with that line, and just sew straight through. And boy, just try to stay on the line. That's the best part. Now you can assembly line sew. So just pick a second background square right behind it, line up that corner, and just assembly line sew right along. Now once you finish, as many as you can manage, going down one side, just pick it up, turn it around, and start going down the second side. It's all assembly line, it works great. So let me just start this one. You continuously sew right down along. Once you have, these two sides done, clip them apart, and sew on the remaining two sides. And I have one that's already done, good red thread so you can see it. At this time, the easiest way to trim is with that nine and a half inch square up ruler. Find the quarter of an inch lines on your ruler and line it up with your seams. Got it poking up there, okay. Quarter of an inch line on the stitching and just Trim off those corners. Those are really big corners. So turn it around and repeat on the opposite side. You trim all four down. And then at this point, just go ahead, set the seams, and press them open. And that way, make sure you don't have any folds left. Set the seams open. Oh my gosh, it's hot. So that you don't have any folds on um, underneath side. Open it up. Perfect. Now I've been totally green on this. This is going to match the star point, but I've got all of these triangles hanging around here, all of these dog ears. I've been picking them up and sewing a second seam right along there. So then you can just take all of these little triangles that you stitch together and turn them into the cutest pinwheel blocks you've ever seen. I know there's going to be a baby coming along, and I can just turn this into a great green quilt. Perfect. Now, I'm just going to go back, finish all my stars, get my snowballs done, and I'll show you how to sew your top together. I'm sewing a crib top together, three by three, so I have my blocks already laid out, with the stars always in the corners and the snowball block in the alternating positions. Great design it makes. Now comes the tricky part, making these seams match. Because from the snowball block, you have this diagonal line coming in to the star block. And the star block goes straight across. So we are going to do some tricky pinning on this. Let's get the vertical row sewn first. I always like to take the second vertical row and flip it right sides together to the first vertical row. And then just pick up the pairs of blocks and stack them from the top down. This is the top. Hold on tight. Make sure you don't lose sight of that. Just get it right to your sewing machine. Drop it down top at the top. Now, I like to use these nice, long, skinny pins. These are the seams that we have to match right here. The snowball block comes in at that angle, and you have to measure over one fourth inch and go down. So that is the match point right there. And let me see if I can just stick that pin in right there. It's over and down one fourth of an inch. And just repeat it on the second side, exactly the same over a fourth and down. Just put your pin in there. Let's see how we can line it up with the star block underneath. The seam is one fourth inch in. There's that point right there, that perky one. Just take the tip of your pin and go right in one fourth inch 
on the star point. And just squeeze it together and then just twist around on your pin. Make sure that the corners line up right out there. That's good. Let's go to this one now. Boy, I, I really think it's a great idea if you do take time and sit and pin. You'll be happier. Okay, go right here. Line it up. Squeeze that pin together and turn it. And then match the corner out here. It's looking good. Let's see how we do. I think you have to put your tongue just right on this one because it is tricky. I always get questions on this one and they say, my points don't match. It doesn't all line up. I think it's just an illusion of match. Okay, needle down. And so just start sewing across here. I actually like to just sew up to the pin. So let's just lift carefully, lift your foot as you get up there. And just before I'm gonna go across that point, I'm gonna pull out the pin. Now, right in between, sometimes there's a little excess fabric. If there is, just give a little pull on it so that both pieces end up being equal sizes. Just keep on sewing straight through. I'm nearly at the pin. And so just pull it out and then make sure you're lined up at the corner down here. It's looking good. And so let's just keep on going. Now, you want to take and pin the next piece and just assembly line, sew it right behind. Go the whole way down through the stack and then open it up and just add the third vertical row. And when you go back across the other way, push your seams away from the snowball block. So now I've kept you in suspense. I want to see how it looks. What do you think? Let's just cut it out here and take a look. See if I'm going to show you or not. Ooh, looking good. Looks great. See how that line is continuous going straight down in there and then right here the same. It's going straight across into the line. Perfect. Looking really good. So remember you press your seams towards the snowball block. You have the least bulk going this way. Let me finish sewing my whole top together and then we'll go on to the borders. Now's the time to decide. Do you have to hang it high and keep it moving or are you just gonna hang it and be very proud? Well, I hope yours looks great. Now I wanna add the border. It is a two inch wide border and I'm using the same color as in the star points. I love it when you frame it with a nice dark piece. After this, first border. The second border is a piece border and it's all of these little two inch pieces that are just going to frame right around there. Now you start out with strips just like we did on the four patch with the background and the dark color. I have a variety of them all stacked up. You need to have a total of 10 of these for your crib and this is just like the four patch where you can take your um, plastic ruler and just put your um, blade in zero, straighten it across, and like a whiz, just cut it two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, it goes so fast. And when they're all stacked up like this, then you don't have to think about which colors you're going to put together. I'm just going to take this, get rid of it. I have another stack set to go. So I want to turn these so that I have the alternating order. I have the dark, the white, and then the dark again. And so I can just sit down and assembly line sew right down through these. It's really tough for me to do a scrappy quilt. I'm always going, oh, does that look right? Is that the good one? Should I change pieces? I would rather just throw them all in a bag and just keep on pulling them out as I go. Okay, just work from the two stacks. Take one from this one, one from that one. They are all different and just keep on assembly line sewing down. Now it's really easy to measure because with these pieces, it's easy to count. Basically, you just need to have one pair for each block. One pair for here, one pair for the star block, and then one more for the four patch. So you basically have to have three pairs per block Plus on the end, 
you need to have another pair to accommodate that two inch piece. So it works great. Assembly line sew into big long strips like this and then press the seam in one direction. Okay, now when you're going to sew it on with that seam in one direction, you always want to place it. Now I'm going to sew down this side, place this strip so that when you flip it right sides together, you sew right down along with the seam. You're not fighting it the whole time. So once you finish one direction, two sides like this, and they're all going to line up straight across. I have a white one here, so I want to have a dark up in the corner. So I'm going to start like that, and I see that my seams are just going to be going down along there. Perfect. I'm going to sew this on all four sides, and then I'll show you some free motion quilting. The snowball block is the perfect block for some free motion quilting. Go ahead and look for one that says it's an 8 inch stencil. Something that's suitable for the double wedding ring is also perfect for the Tennessee walls. So this one I thought would be a really great one. It's got lots of fancy curves in it. Well, when you put it right on the snowball block, then you have points that go into the blocks beside it. Lots of action in the middle. That's a good one. It is about eight inches square. This one is a little different. You can put it in on square. It is a continuous line. Wonderful. It fits inside perfect. Work good. Or how about a really simple one? That's what I'm going to go for. Well, you can tell this is continuous line because when you put your marker in there, you trace around inside, you can see that you just keep on going continuously without stopping until you get back to where you started. So let's do some practice. Take a background piece, take a backing piece. This is a 12 inch square. Layer it with some batting. How about some thin batting for practice? And then your background on the top. Next, you really need to tape it down, especially since this is a really small piece, or clamp it down if it's a larger piece. Your clamps have to fit on the side of the table if you use these. I really like those for big quilts, though. Next, how about some safety pins? Um, these are curved safety pins. This is a pin cover so that you can hold on to those little safety pins. Oh, it saves you a lot of time in with your fingers. So put your safety pin in just like this. Take some needle nose pliers and just snap it in the middle. Your covers won't come out and trust me, they save you a lot of effort. So let me just take this stencil. I'm going to put it right in the middle and I'm going to take my pinning tool. I want to pin around the outside edges in the corners so that I can hold this down while I mark it. And I think I've already got some in there. Just push it down like that and it's perfect. Now, use a disappearing marking pen or one that you can wash away. If you use a disappearing one, trust me, you have to work fast because just when you're not expecting it, you go back to your quilt and the line is gone. This one is going to disappear with a little spritzing. You just put your uh, marker in the hole and while you are marking, think about your continuous line. That way you actually have an action planned of exactly how you're going to go. And I know a lot of times people like to continuously mark the line in the center. It breaks right in the middle, but you can go back and put those lines in there. I am nearly done. I'm right up to just about where I started. I've gone the whole way around. There's nothing in the middle. So you can remove this and then just continue your line so that you can see once you start going exactly where you're going. Perfect. Ah, let me see. And this one's going to go right across here. Good. Now, I've got my darning foot on. And this is what a darning foot looks like. It kind of jumps over your fabric. It's great. You don't set your stitch. You actually do the moving of your piece of fabric 
so you get your stitches in there yourself. Okay, let me take this. I need to get my gloves on because they have these little grips on them. They're going to hold on to my um, fabric and just move it right along. Perfect. Now, the feed dogs are up right now. That's what the feed dogs look like. And to turn them on this machine, it's so easy. You just push a button and they drop. I love that. Well, we are set. So let's just take this and you are going to just drop your needle, put your needle in and put your presser foot down, get your fingers like this. And all you want to do is stitch on the line. Remember that you are controlling the stitch length. You're just going like this. Try to keep the top at the top and try to keep an eye on where the line is. So now I just swung around through the middle and just keep on going, continuously sewing around the outside on the lines, looking good. And then once you get going, oh, it's this practice, so just have a good time. Well, I have one that I started on earlier, so all I'm going to do to get rid of those lines is just give a little spritz. Now, nobody will ever know if I stayed on the lines or not. Enjoy your quilting. The Tennessee Walsh Table Runner adds a festive touch to your holiday table. And this one is very cheery. I just love those bright red star points with the medium red in the center. Now the four patch is that soft green and I love those dark green points around the outside edge. Doesn't even look like a star block anymore, completely different. It is a kaleidoscope setting with some free motion quilting in that snowball block. Well, it's just two stars. For a short table, you can just keep on adding for the length of your table. I think I need about eight stars running along. I have such a long table. Well, I have a two block all set to show you. You need to have two stars, so let's just take those and separate those out. They're pretty festive too. They almost look like Thanksgiving with this orangey color and then the green in the middle. And then in between comes the snowball block exactly like I showed you. Now to finish this off, I need to have some rectangles. They are based on three and a half inches wide and the size of your block, whatever you measured, nine and a half, nine and a quarter. And those rectangles are going to go on each side of the snowball block. It's looking good. Now, we need to have four corners. They are also three and a half inches. They're going to go right along here, one for each corner. We are already extending it. Sounds like a Thanksgiving feast is coming up. Now, to finish this, I need to have three more snowball blocks. So let's just take one of the snowball blocks and we're going to create star points with this. So line up three and a half right along the outside edge and cut it off. Take this piece, turn it around, and cut another three and a half inch. Let me just trim this off. And the fun part is this. This is actually extra. You can get rid of it. Now, these star points are going to go right along each one of the sides. And I do recommend you do those pinnings so that you can get that all lined up. Okay, I've already taken two more of the snowball blocks. Let me just place these right along the outside edges as well. Oh, I think I need to turn it. So, it's completely changing the look of it. You can't even tell that it was a Tennessee waltz. Now, whenever you sew it together, you're just going to flip this middle row, right sides together, and assembly line sew. Chain it all along there to the end. And then the same thing right down along here. The last thing is to go straight across these short rows and press your seams towards those snowball blocks. And now it's time for the borders. I just love to audition different fabrics, find out what looks good. I usually like to frame 
with a dark border. So I selected this one that is the star points. Well, since that's so dark, I thought that the same fabric that we used in the four patch would look really good as a binding. That's great, but this is such a nice, wide, colorful print, maybe a wider one as the first border in this. And then I can go ahead and use the green as a binding. That would set it off great too. Well, strike up the band and enjoy making your Tennessee Waltz quilt. Yeah.